This video is an introduction to shielded metal arc welding, or SMAW, or stick as it's commonly referred to. And what we're going to do is kind of not only show you how to strike an arc, sustain an arc, and make a bead, but also the theory behind what's going on, the principles of operation, if you will, why stuff is happening, just a general overview of the uh, stick welding process. We're going to start here with the principles of operation, which is just kind of telling you uh, what's going on with the entire process here. The polarity we'll start with, there's three polarities on a stick welder. Direct current electrode positive, direct current electrode negative, and AC. You're going to run on direct current electrode positive. What happens is, between with the electrode being positive, the workpiece is a negative. You're going to bring them together to create an electrical short, which a lot of times is bad. You don't want to cross the terminals on a car battery, right? You don't want to touch a negative to a positive because you're going to get a short. With welding, that's why it welds. So you're going to create an electrical short. Um, you're going to get an arc, which is going to be a plasma discharge of electrical energy that floats across a small gap, which is called your arc length. Uh, the electrodes are consumable electrodes. In the middle, it's a metal cord wire. So whatever you're welding, which is typically a low carbon steel or a stainless or an aluminum, the metal core is going to match up with the base metal. Um, it's also going to have uh, a flux on the outside that's um, going to shield the arc from atmospheric contamination. As this consumable electrode is getting eaten away, the uh, coating on the outside is going to provide a shielding gas so that you don't get the atmospheric contamination, much like with MIG, you have uh, argon CO2 mix, or with TIG, just straight argon. The shielding is actually provided from the coating that's on the outside of the consumable electrode. Once the um, weld has solidified, you have slag formation, so it's going to leave a little bit of slag on the outside of the weld that you have to chip off. So what we'll do now is we'll move over here into our different kinds of electrodes, and we're going to do the two main kinds. I think every welder will agree that you have a 6010 or a 6011, which is very similar, and then a 7018 are probably the most common types of electrodes. Um, what these designations mean, and you'll see them stamped right on the ends of the electrodes, um, the E means electrode, the 70 means 70,000 pounds per square inch minimal tensile strength. So if you're going back up to 6010 here, it would be 60,000 pounds per square inch of minimal tensile strength. The third number on these electrodes is going to dictate your position, your welding position. The 1 means you can weld in all positions. So both of these rods can weld in all positions. And then last but not least, the fourth number on the electrode is going to be your uh, coating and your electrical characteristics. So with 6010, it's a zero. It's a cellulose-based uh, flux. So it's basically plant matter. So if you get it too hot, it'll burn up it. You know, so you want to watch your heat on 6010s. And then the eight is a rutile-based mineral flux for 718, which provides a lot uh, thicker of a slag. Now what we're going to show you in the lab here is we're going to start with an intro to the machine. We're going to show you how to set up the machine, um, show you the stuff that's on the machine that is associated with stick welding because it will also do TIG welding. They're, they're usually combos. So we're going to show you how to set up the machine. Then we're going to show you how to strike an arc. You have to physically touch the plate. So you have to give it a little scratch. People always um, compare it to starting a match. Uh, then we're going to go into a 6010 rod and we're going to do it without a whip and then we're going to do it with a whip. So you kind of float back and forth in the puddle when you're doing a whip. 6010 sometimes is referred to as whip rod. Uh, it's got a lot thinner of a, a flux, like I said. So we'll show you that. And then we'll do a stringer of 7018. 7018 is much more prettier of a, a weld. Um, 6010 has a lot of spatter, and it's usually used in root passes. So what we'll do is um, we'll show you what the uh, 6010 and 7018 look like now. And then we'll go out to the lab and uh, get into the machines and how to strike an arc. This is a 6010 rod, 330 seconds diameter. We're gonna, I put a three hole punch that kept rolling on me so I could see the uh, designations on the end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in on the designations on the end. That's all it's gonna say is 6010. Sometimes there's brand names on them. But that tells you that it's a 60,000 pound minimal tensile strength, all position rod with a cellulose based flux. So now we'll go into the 7018. 
This is the 7018, and you can see it's got a lot thicker of a coating on it. We're going to move in here so you can see a little better. This is Excalibur 7018. That's a name brand made by Lincoln Electric. It's pretty common. Works really good. We've tried to get knockoffs. It just doesn't run as good. But Excalibur is just the name of the uh, brand, I guess. So we'll get out in the lab now. All right, this is our stick welder. We're going to start on the polarities here. You can see it's pointing to direct current electrode positive, so that's what we're going to want to be on. If you wanted to switch it to TIG, you'd go to direct current electrode negative. Or if you're welding aluminum, you'd go to AC. So we got her on direct current electrode positive. Now we'll look at the rest of the uh, controls. All right, these are the controls. This is the rest of the controls. They're on the top of the machine. We'll start right here. This is for a uh, we're welding aluminum with TIG, so we don't care about this because it's not even going to be active. Up here, you want to switch it. If it's down from um, this little TIG torch here, go up to your stick symbol there. Over here, that's a little foot pedal. That's the signified TIG, so you want to get it off the foot pedal and make it go to local, which means that you actually touch the electrode to the plate that you're welding in order to get the arc to initiate. And then here's your amper setting. Like I said, we're going to start with um, 6010, 3 seconds of an inch diameter. So we're going to run around 70 amps. And that's all there is to setting up your stick well. All right, these are your two leads. This is, is your electrode holder. This is your ground. So because you're on direct current electrode positive, this is positively charged, this is negatively charged. So we're going to come over to our workstation here put this ground clamp on, so now this table is grounded. So when you take your electrode, you grab a 6010 on here, that's what we're starting with, it goes into the electrode holder, and then the machine's off, so it won't weld. So you want to go over here and kind of strike it, or tap it, like you would like striking a match, which we'll kind of show you that here in a second. I'm going to actually get a match and strike it on a box. So. We always tell people to start with a, like you're striking a match, so I'm going to actually strike a match with it in the electrode and see if it works. It Alright, with stick welding, what you're going to do is come over here just like we did with that match a second ago, kind of scratch it. Once it starts, we're going to go this direction of travel with the electrode trailing. Rather than going like this, which would be a leading angle. There's a general rule of thumb, which works in a lot of cases, that if there's slag, you drag it. So you're just going to drag it like this. Not always, but a lot of times you want to have a trailing angle so the slag goes behind the puddle solidifies rather than running over the slag and then you get slag inclusions. So we're going to strike an arc here with our 6010 and do it without a whip first. Alright, this is what 6010 slag looks like. It's not real thick. You can almost just wire brush it off. Now what we'll do is we'll do a, a 6010 uh, whip, whip motion. So you kind of see that, then we'll compare the two. This got really hot towards the end. I was kind of on the edge of this. So it's, um, we would have had to turn it down to get the proper bead shape. That's what it looks like with no whip, so we'll do a whip now.
These are our two 60-10 passes. One on the left was no whip, one on the right is with a whip. The reason you do that whipping motion is because you want to get out of the puddle, allow it to solidify. A lot of times they do that if you're blowing a hole in a root. Get out, let it solidify, then go back and add and keep going. So we get into our eighth inch 7018 now. 7018 tends to run a little bit hotter. So what we're gonna do, and it's also a heavier diameter, so we're going from three thirty seconds to eighth of an inch. So we gotta make an amperage adjustment. And we're gonna run it right around 120. If it was um, 330 seconds, 718, we'd probably be okay at like 90. What just happened to me there was the, the, the amperage was a little bit cold and it froze. If it freezes like that, you just bend your electrode off until it pops off. It's really hard to get to restart now on 718s because you lost all that uh, flux on the end. If it happens a lot, turn your amperage up. If you're freezing a lot, it means you're running too cold. That's one of the main things that can happen when stick welding, especially in the beginning when you're not used to actually touching it. It's just something you got to get the feel for. This is a half used 7018 and you'll notice that the metal is actually recessed back in the, the flux a little bit. So to restart this, you got to take it over to the table and kind of scratch the end of it. We'll uh, show you how to do that and then do a quick little restart here. So to restart this, uh, there's some actually grinding marks right here and I'll just do that it pops it off. The problem with that is you're probably going to lose a little shielding in the beginning. So if you're like doing a code quality weld, you're not going to want to do that. Well, here we'll strike an arc and you'll see how it's kind of erratic in the beginning here. This is our 718 pass right here and you can see that's what it looks like before you chip it. Now when you chip this slag, the stuff flies over. You make sure you have eye protection on it, but we'll chip it here real quick. It's a lot, it's a lot thicker than the 6010 you'll see. See how the bead's a lot more smooth than the 6010? This is our 7018, I just wire wheeled it. Just a stringer bead on a piece of scrap. Looks good. Hopefully that gives you a good idea on how to start stick welding. It gives you a general overview of the stick welding process. If you're looking for a project to get into that's um, following up on your, uh, when you get a bead going on scrap metal, we did a video called How to Start Stick Welding. And it shows you all four positions kind of uh, how to get to repetition going so that you can do that you know like automatically that's all i got for you today uh, thanks for watching and subscribing to the tv well